Okay, so for the first one I'm going to do, this is so simple. Even if you don't know how to sew, really, um, you, if you could do a straight line, you can do this, okay? Um, now, if I this is going to be a towel apron. If I was doing this for a gift or for someone, I would definitely go and spend more on a towel that is decent, okay? But I have got this junky towel because... Y'all, if you've ever had a Dollar Tree towel or a towel like this, you know it catches everything, right? But it won't dry squat. Um, so that's actually what I want because I want this one. I mean, they're nice to, to give us gifts and you can personalize them, monogram them, whatever you want to do. But it's so easy. And this I want to catch thread when I'm sewing because it sticks to my shirt all the stinking time. So I'm going to get rid of my tags. So I don't like tags. Okay. So you have your towel. This is pretty easy. Seriously. Seriously, seriously easy. Now you will want to wash your towel first, especially if you have a nice, good cotton towel. Okay. Because you don't want it to shrink and wash your fabric as well as your towel. Okay. But uh, this is just for me to wear in here and just for, you know, threads to stick to, like I said. So what I'm wanting is I need a tie to go around here. Now, you can use ribbon if you want to, but I do not like how ribbon ties myself. So I'm going to take my red and it doesn't match, but it's just for me. So I don't care, but you want coordinating, coordinating, uh, fabric, right? Okay. So I'm going to cut, and this is so simple. Seriously, let me get that out of my way. I'm going to cut two. Once I get this even, let me put it here. Okay. I'm going to even it up and then I'm going to cut two three and a half or four even but three and a half inch pieces okay I'm gonna cut two three and a half inch strips so that's what I'm gonna do okay so now if you want to add ruffles to this to make it you know a little cuter like I said you want to monogram personalize whatever you want to do this is just a quick last minute gift that you can give to someone okay now I'm going to use the full width of this fabric. I'm going to take these two selvage edges, but you really want to cut your, your edges off. Okay. But, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not going to be washing this because what happens when you leave these selvage edges on, when you wash it, they'll wrinkle. Okay. But I'm not too worried about it. So I am going to first sew a line right down through here. I'm just going to, Oh, I forget I have that on my wrist every stinking time. I'm just going to pin that right there. Now, you want these straight when you're sewing, okay? Because this is going to have to match up to, to, to each other. Ta, ta, ta. Okay, I got these two sewn together. So now it is one long strip, okay? And I am just going to take this. I'm going to spread it apart, and I'm going to iron that flat, really flat, okay? Now, while I was ironing this flat, I took these and ironed both ends in. Shoot. <laughs> I'm picking up thread from everywhere, y'all. I've been piddling all day in the, in the sewing, trying to get patterns made. Um, but anyway. Now, I'm just going to take this. And like I said, I did this on both ends. Okay, so now what I'm going to do when I have my my edges okay I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it over on itself right sides together and we are going to sew this now I have a skinny band if you want a wider band like I said you would have cut it at four okay but I am just gonna take this over there and I'm gonna do a one 
just a, a slight edge. I'm going to bring my needle all the way to the side and use my presser foot as my guide like I normally do. If you've watched any of my videos, then you know what I'm talking about. And I'm just going to sew this together all the way down, okay? Now all you got to do is take this and flip it inside out. You can use a safety pin. And I love these. I get them at Hobby Lobby. I also have some on my Amazon store if they're still there. Uh, sometimes stuff is missing, but you just put it in, twist it, and then pull it down. But I am going to use a turning stick, okay? Because it's just easier and faster for me. So I'm going to turn this and I'll be back. So now I have it sewn, flipped inside out. And I ironed my seam down the middle. And before I get lashed out on, this is a beginner friendly project, okay? This is as easy as it can get, buddy. So now I'm going to sew this to this. Now I know you could have unfolded and sewn it, but this is just easier. It's already seamed, so there's no need to have to cover that unless you want to that's totally up to you okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find the middle of this right here and then I'm going to find the middle of my towel okay now this is a Dollar Tree towel so it's probably wonky see it's already collecting crap it's going to be good. I know it. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to pull this down. This is my middle and I want it right on here. Okay. So because this is already finished, this is what I'm going to do. This is where it belongs. So now I have my seam here. See? So I can place this where my seam is because I have it in the middle. And I'm just going to pin randomly down this, keeping it on the seam or at the seam. This seam is just above this seam. I'm trying to have the same amount of space at the top here so it's not hanging all funky. Um, you can also wear them when you do dishes, but I prefer my kitchen towel boa for that and I, I usually use it for cooking too I have two of them one for cooking one for dishes and I will link that pattern in the description for my kitchen towel boa I have made those for gifts and everybody loves them um, I also have tea towels uh, several different types that are in my sewing playlist and all this is in my sewing playlist but I'll try to list them all in the description because they all make great gifts now all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it on this side so I can see and I'm going to stitch right on that line right there that is provided for me in my towel. Now if not I would just put my you know put my foot up against this and just straight stitch down the middle. That's all you got to do from here to here. It's that simple. Now all you have left to do is clip your threads and your apron is basically done okay that's all you have to do to make a simple little apron now like I said you can put a ruffle on this you can do what you want you can seal your ends now I, I would stitch the ends closed that's just me but I would stitch my ends closed but since I'm just using this in here for crafting I'm not going to worry about it. All this is finished and it don't look sloppy. It looks nice. Um, but like I said, if you want it to come down and make it, you know, if you're more of a seamstress, then that would be cute. But I would have done that before I sewn it. I would have ironed it and, you know, you've seen tutorials on there. But there it is. And that is my little apron and I am excited about it. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do a coffee mug. This is a Dollar Tree coffee mug. Um, wow, my handle's cracked. I didn't even know that. Anyway, 
I measured around my cup, okay, and then I gave half inch. That's how you do it. Measure around your cup. Now, um, but anyways, this is just for the Dollar Tree coffee mugs you can give as gifts because they have really cute mugs with cute sayings, okay? And I love them for hot chocolate. Not so much coffee because when I drink coffee, I've got a big old cup. But um, I love them for hot chocolate but they get so hot you can't touch them especially the the kids so i'm going to use my favorite fabric here okay and you're going to need two pieces of fabric or you can do one and fold it over um and i'm going to use insel bright batting okay um this is the stuff you put in pot holders i'm not sure why mine looks so nasty Oh, yeah, I do. I took it out of an ironing thing. Okay, anyways, I'm going to use this right here. So, let me cut my pieces, and I'll get back with you. I've got my pieces cut, and I've got two fabric and two batting. And I want two batting because I boil my water, like seriously boil my water, and I don't want to get burnt, okay? So, I'm going to take a ponytail holder, okay? It's just a simple ponytail holder. And I'm going to sandwich this ponytail holder, oops, wrong way, between these two pieces of fabric, and this is going to be how I close it, okay? Now, you want to make sure you leave this hanging out, because you don't want that hung up in your, in your machine. But I'm just going to put two pins. Now, I've got my insel bright together, okay? And I have my two fabric pieces right sides together so when I sew this I will grab these two pieces and flip it inside out and this will be on the inside what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew down both sides and I'm gonna start here sew, go down and sew leaving this open before I sew I am going to trim away just a piece of this because it will be easier to fold in my ends. Now, I'm going to take and iron these and sew these like this. So that I don't have to turn them under when I'm done. Okay. Now, I've sewn all the way around. Left this open. Sewed that in. And I went over this three or four times to secure it in. It will pull, but it won't pull that through. So now I'm just going to flip it inside out by grabbing these two pieces and fold it inside out and press it good. Now once it's ironed flat, I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to go all the way around. Make sure you do not hit this metal thing in there. I'm going to go in over here and pull it down some. That don't need to be that long anyway. So I'll just go in with tweezers and pull that down. And then I'm going to sew all the way around, sew this shut, okay? Now, if you want to, you can leave a piece of this open and then sew that shut, but I'd rather leave the end open. It's easier for me. Okay, now, I've got this far, got it sewn all the way around. I pulled my metal piece way down here. But if y'all use elastic, you know, a little thin elastic or um, a bigger hair tie with no metal thing in it you won't even have to worry about it but anyway now all I got to do is sew my button on okay and I like the two hole button as opposed to the four hole button unless it's like a big button so I'm going to put my holes this way so that this can catch most of the button you see what I'm saying so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it around my cup now you want this snug so your loop has to go through your cup hole okay your cup handle not your cup hole Sorry, if y'all can't see what I'm doing. And then this loops over your Band-Aid. I'm sorry, I was looking at my thumb. Over your button. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, I want my button right about here. Because you want this snug. You don't want to be holding on to this and this come off and burn your hand. So, now, I'm just going to hand sew. If you have a uh, machine that sews buttons, go ahead. But I lost my buttonhole foot. Or my button foot. So, I can't do that. So, I'm just going to put my button on by hand. 
Okay, my button is sewn on. And all you have to do, I mean, most of you know how to sew on a button. But I do know some people that don't know how to sew on a button even. But you just notch your thread and you go in and you go through your holes like four times maybe. Now, I did use strong, thick upholstery thread. Not dental floss, are y'all shocked? But I used upholstery thread uh, to do that. And then tie it off. And all you have to do is wrap this around your mug. And there you go. Now, ain't that cute? Now you can hold on to your mug with your hot chocolate coffee or whatever and not burn your hands. Um, now, if you want this taller, by all means, go ahead. But you got to have somewhere to put your lip. And I'm sure you don't want to put your lip on cotton. Okay. Now, to, to make sure my button ain't going to pop off, I will, because I do this sometimes on crafts, sometimes on clothes. But I'll just take fabric tack glue. And I'll just put a dot of glue over there, smear it around, and then let that dry. And then there's my coffee mug. Uh, coffee mug cozy right there. And people love these for Christmas. I know my grandkids are going to love them. I'm going to make them some so they don't get burnt with their hot chocolate. Because they have to have that at G-Mom and Paul Paul's house. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so before I do it, okay, I want to show off my card um they say they watch my channel all the time it's very good friends of mine i love 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 this lady she's the sweetest but she makes cards y'all and she made this one just for me it's from mike and eve and she does such a great job and i get one every year and i want to say thank you and i absolutely love it you are so creative I told her she needs a YouTube channel. She should have been doing this years ago. And uh, she would be doing good right now. But anyway. Okay. Oh, sorry. My trash is. Y'all, do you love these? Do you love these? Sellas. I think that's how you say it. I don't even know. Sellas. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. They're chocolate covered cherries and they got the liquid. Not that, you know, that thick crap these are my favorite i love these things my husband bought me some last night but uh anyways if you like them throw me a hand up in the comments i love them love them just curious okay you're gonna need this is just a fat quarter y'all and it will do um they have bowl cozies i call them cozies bowl bowl cozies okay but i don't use a bowl um, most of the time I use a cup, okay? And this is a Dollar Tree cup. I do put soup in, but these are my favorite. If you can find them, they're my favorite. And I just took vinyl and put that on it, but this is my favorite. So we're going to make a little koozie for this right here, okay? So what you're going to need, and you don't need a pattern, all right? You just, you don't. You need two nine by nine pieces of fabric and you're going to need two pieces of cotton batting, but not just cotton batting. You need what's called wrap and zap. Okay. Wrap and zap. And I'll try to put a picture, um, in, uh, when I edit, but it's called wrap and zap and it is for the microwave. Uh, most battings have a little bit of poly in them and when you do these you do have to have you have to have cotton batting a hundred percent cotton fabric and cotton thread now you can buy cotton thread at Walmart or uh, Hobby Lobby Joann's wherever and you you will need you will need that so I'm gonna cut out a nine by nine square okay nine by nine square so let me get my tools here okay now i have my omni grid i have a set listed in my amazon store that are similar some say they're a bit thinner and uh but i'm, I'm they say they're nice the reviews are good and then i have this original one listed in my amazon store i absolutely love this thing 
because uh, of the measurements on it make it so much easier so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that this edge you know this stuff is really weird okay but I'm gonna make sure this edge and this edge is perfectly as, as good as I can get nothing's perfect um, matched up okay and then I'm gonna take this ruler right here okay and I am going to put this on let me see it's got to be nine so I'm going down here and I'm gonna do this backwards because it's easier to me so I'm gonna put this on the nine because I know I need a nine nine inch square nine by nine okay so I'm gonna put it right on the edge and I am simply going to do this left-handed with a sore thumb gonna cut right against my ruler here oops I slipped y'all see that so I'm not holding it right you don't want to slip right against that right there okay there's my nine now I'm gonna go down to get my nine this way so it is a nine by nine okay so I'm just gonna do the same thing and there's my nine by nine piece it's that simple um, you'll want two of them now I have two of them okay which is good that's what we want so let me get rid of the rest of this so now the easiest way that I have found to do this is to take my fabric and you have a selvage end the selvage goes to the side okay okay so what I like to do is I I really prefer 505 okay I love 505 quilt batting or quilt spray temporary adhesive whatever you want to call it I love it but I couldn't get it so I got June Taylor uh, basting spray but either way there it is so to cut my two pieces this is what I like to do I'll set them right here okay and I am going to lightly spray them because it doesn't matter if I get it on the fabric all right so I'm gonna lightly spray them trying not to over spray because this stuff is sticky and I just give them a good coat Ugh. okay now I'm going to take these peel them off and I am simply going to set them on my fabric I'm a miser so I try to get the most out of my stuff now it's not straight I'm gonna line it up to the line so that I know it's straight okay so there we go there's one now let's do the other one and you can get you can get a bowl cozy out of a fat quarter too this one you can actually if you do right measure right you can might get two ah uh, but anyway now all I'm gonna do is I can't believe I did that I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut out around my squares okay uh, you can't get no easier than this I try to work smarter not harder as my youngest child says so I'm just gonna cut these out and I'll be right back so now that we have our two nine by nine pieces as perfect as we can get them I am going to draw a line okay and I'm just gonna use not that ruler that sucker's long I'm just gonna use a ruler okay and I'm gonna go from one corner corner I'm gonna go from one corner to the other corner now you want to move over just a little because you got to leave a line 
or a space for your your pencil okay now I'm going to use a pencil because you're not going to be able to see this anywho so I'm just going to take and drag my pencil along this right here and these are going to be our sew lines okay and I'm going to put my machine on a long stitch not not the longest probably about middle ways yours might go up to a five I don't know what mine goes to not this one but anyway I put these lines in because I can't sew straight I'll just be honest with y'all so I'm gonna do the same to this one so now I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna sew straight across these lines right here in an X okay that's all I'm gonna do straight stitch along them lines these are our X's hope you can see it so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this down and this is all together or it should be make sure it's flat you might want to run your fingers through it you know make sure it's flat okay now I am going to put my my darts in to make it come come up so your V is at the bottom like an envelope okay so we're gonna be working on this side and this side right now so you've got your envelope now what you want to do is you want to mark a one inch here and a two inch here and then you're just going to draw your line okay one inch two inch now you're going to do the same on this side you're going to do a one inch and a two inch see it's following your your envelope lines kind of so I'm gonna push this down really hard and I'm gonna draw my dart line okay that's that dart line now you're gonna want to take it and fold it where your envelope is on this side again make sure it's flat and your sides are even okay this is important and do the same thing I'll show you one more time okay I love this thing I don't even I got it with a set Fiskars 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 one inch two inch draw your line put this back one inch two inch draw your line now you're going to do this on both pieces so you'll have these lines okay so you're going to do this on both pieces now all you have to do is pin or clip I bought these little clips I love them I never thought I would but I do but anyway clip in and I'm clipping and then when I sew I'll go over here and I'll clip and clip now I don't know if you've ever sewed a dart but you'll start here back stitch a little bit and go down here and back stitch a little bit you really don't have to back stitch on this just keep going and it'll tie itself off and then you back stitch here and then sew off all you're doing is following this line okay now you just want to take your scissors <clears throat> excuse me and cut as close to the stitching as possible but don't cut your stitching okay and do this on all of your little darts 
Now, if you want to use pink and shears for this, go ahead. That's up to you. Um, also, if you want it yours to have rounded corners instead of square corners, at this point, you can just clip or just put a thing around there, you know, like your soup mug, for instance. Put your soup mug down, trace around it, and cut your little curved corners. That's, that's up to you. I personally um, don't care. So now we have this one. Then I'm going to clip this one. Now you're just going to take this one, flip this one the right side, leave this one the wrong side, stick it down in there. Okay? Now these strings don't matter because you ain't going to see them. Now at this point, you can clip or pin your pieces and I honestly think I'm going to pin now you may have to stretch just a little if they're not matching up completely I mean it, it happens now when I go to the machine I will leave it this way okay so it's cupped out and it's the easiest way to sew it to me so I am going to mark where I'm going to leave this open okay and I don't want to do it in one of the seams that's just me so I'm gonna leave it open right here to right here maybe this 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 whole section here okay cuz it's you're gonna have to shove all this through this hole so I'm gonna leave that much and that is about an inch and a half opening a good inch and a half or inch and and three-quarter opening okay so I'm gonna go stitch right around this edge all the way around from here all the way back to here okay it's all I'm gonna do just a straight stitch normally I leave my needle over or in the middle or over and then use my foot to guide me and that's what I'm gonna do so I've sewn all the way around and now all I got to do is turn it inside out through my little opening right here. So this is my challenge right here. I like to grab a corner and pull it through. And that just makes it easier for me to pull all the rest. But this is just a job right here. I got it flipped and actually I could have filmed that. It didn't take long at all. Uh, now you want to, that thing's too small. Um, you want to take and get your corners and poke all your corners out. Now you can clip them if you want to. I did not. Um, just because I, I forgot, honestly. Now make sure when you use this, you don't poke it too hard. You'll poke through your fabric. But there's my corners out. That works perfect. And I'm just going to work on this to get all my corners you know what I'm saying? Out. And you don't have to see that, honestly. Now, all I'm going to do is just pull and wiggle. Okay? Y'all, I am sweating. I should not be wearing a sweater in here. Oh, Lord. Pull and wiggle. And you're going to push this down. Like this right here. Push all your little darts out. Making this fun. Okay. Now, this will actually fit some bowls. Okay, but look, your soup cup's going to fit right in there. And there you go. But we're not done. <laughs> we are not done. I am going to, I'm going to iron around this, okay? So I'm going to iron my darts in. And iron this as flat around here as possible matching you know getting my seam on the outside okay now we are just going to take this and we're going to top stitch right around this sealing this shut and making this all stick together okay so that's what we're going to go do now there you go your cozy is finished for your little for your little thing here. Uh, you can 
do it reversible. And y'all see what I did? I did one one way and one the other. <laughs> you might want to match your pieces if they match. But anyway, this is your little bow cozy, cozy, bowl, cozy, cup cozy. These fit perfect. Love it. Love it. Now my fingers won't get hot. This one will fit, but it's loose as a goose in a hailstorm. But it will work. I mean, you can pick it up. You see what I'm saying? But anyway, I have, don't don't make fun of me. These are my little Corel. They're antique dishes. I love antique stuff. If you know me, you know me. Um, but anyway, they fit perfect. I mean perfect in the 9x9. Nine nine. Now, if you have the bigger soup bowls, look, I'll show you one I done. This was just a practice run. And this is a 10x10 10 10 square done the exact same way except I rounded off my edges and the soup mug will kind of fit in there but it's loose this one will not at all I mean might as well not even have it but this fits in here okay but you have a lot on the side where you don't with the 9x9 nine nine, which I like now if I would have curved the edges it would have been shorter but for the big bowls or any big soup bowls, this 10 by 10 works great. So you can do them 9 by 9, 10 by 10. For this cup, I might even would do a 9.5 or 8, 8, not 9.5, 8 and a half or an 8 is what I meant. I would do an 8 and a half or an 8 for this one maybe. Um, but that's they're all done the same. Easy, easy peasy, easy peasy. So there you go I just wanted to show you all my apron I told you I would when I got done and it makes an awesome thread catcher no thread on my sweater or my clothes and when I was snipping thread instead of throwing it on the floor I just touched this and it stuck all this is from clipping threads so this works awesome in the craft room well here they are all the little projects you can use your own fabrics Style them any way you want to. This is just mine and my ideas. Just wanted to show you what you could do for last minute gifts. There's my apron. Like I said, use a better towel if you're gonna give it as a gift if you want to. Just made this for my craft room and I lint rolled all that thread off. But there's all my projects. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, you are a blessing. Goodbye.